our perceptions influence how we focus on and how we act on reality. Perception is more important than the reality of whatever is happening. There are some filters I have discovered which if I apply or you apply it to per our perception of things or circumstances around us, it helps us have another viewpoint that will change the reality of what is happening. Welcome to Kingdom Principles for Daily Living by Doxa Mission. At Doxa Mission, we believe in healing for the total person, spirit, soul, and body. I am Dr. Ndidi Dagu. Today we'll be looking at the topic, adjust your perception. Father, we give you thanks even as we get into this. Help us to understand your word and be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what is perception? First of all, let me just state that our perception of any circumstance, situation, or anything is more important than the reality of that thing. If we look at the definition of perception and reality, perception is the way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something. More or less a mental impression of what that thing is. While reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist. Existence that is absolute or self-sufficient or objective, and that existence not subject to human decisions or convention. This is how the dictionary looks at perception and looks at reality. But let's go on with this. Our perceptions influence how we focus on something, how we remember it, how we interpret something, how we understand it, how and how we act on it in terms of the reality of it. One problem is that the lens through which we see something, the way we see something, is often distorted by many things about us including our genetic predispositions our past experiences our prior knowledge or preconception of this situation our emotions our notions our in self-interest and even the way our cognition now, if we look at this diagram, just explaining what I just mentioned, perception can be different. If we look at this person here and the other one, they are both standing on different sides of a letter that is written in front of them. If this person looks at the letter from her angle, she sees it as the letter six, while the other person sees it as the letter, as the, uh, um, uh, the number six, and this one sees it as the number nine. And if care is not taken, big arguments could ensue because of the perspective from which each of them is looking at that single object. To each of them, their perception of it is different and they are going to act or react depending on how they perceive the object. Now, it's been demonstrated 
True research, as mentioned earlier, that the way we look at something is more important than the reality or the objective reality of that thing. And so it is very serious that we are careful how we perceive something. My experience with perception and reality, I'm just going to give us a, a short story of an experience I had. While on a, a scholarship, specifically it was in, in Cuba, I was there for 11 months studying. At the same time I was, um, I was studying, there was an Italian orthopedic surgeon, a specialist who was also studying. Um, she was a young lady quite um, about the same age as I, I was at that time. But while I was still one or two exams from my from becoming a specialist, she was already a specialist. She had traveled the world. She had the same scholarship I had and she was training in that place. One of the days that we were in the hospital, I met her in a, a state of, of stress. She was so stressed out, um, smoking incessantly, like she didn't know what to do. And when I asked her what the problem was, she explained to me that she owned a vehicle that was four years old. And that because she had been traveling a lot, trying to fulfill certain life desires that she had, that four-year-old vehicle, um, there were new models that her peers would have bought. But because of her trips and her journeys, she wouldn't be able to afford to change her vehicle at that time. And so this was stressing her out because her peers would have the new vehicle and she wouldn't have it. And I was shocked by this because in comparison to her own situation, my situation was that as at the time I met her, a year or two previously, I had bought a four-year-old vehicle from somebody else and that vehicle was already at least one or two years old. And I was so grateful to God that I had a vehicle in good condition that was probably about six or seven years old. And as far as I was concerned, I was still going to be able to use it for another three years. Now, our circumstances were different. Our pays were different. And our perception was different. To me, a four-year-old vehicle was almost brand new. This was the state it, uh, the vehicle was when I bought it. And that was what I could afford. But to her, this was a source of stress. And so what happened was when I sat her down and helped her see through my eyes how blessed she was to be able to have a four-year-old vehicle, as I watched her, all the stress and everything she had was gone. And now this became an eye-opener for me. Something I felt was a big and mighty blessing to me, I found out was a source of stress to somebody else. Now, so just like you can take pictures and adjust the way the picture looks through different lenses that you might put on a camera, so we can adjust our perception through setting deliberate filters that we can apply to ourselves in looking at the situation and circumstances we face. And this will change our perception of those situations and circumstances and help us to overcome. Now let's look at it. I have discovered some filters that I deliberately apply to my perception of things depending on what the circumstance is in order to help me have another viewpoint and from the experience I had it will help me cope better or handle the situation in a better way. One of the, the ways um, is the exact way I've just described in the story I gave and that is 
if you see something or a circumstance that is influencing your life or you don't understand it or things are not going the way you think they should go, consult someone you know and trust for an unbiased view or advice. Now, when you consult somebody, they will, as you tell the person the story or the circumstance you are facing, one of the things that happens is that just telling the person about it clarifies your mind and gives you another viewpoint. Secondly, the person will give you their own viewpoint for you to be able to see. And sometimes you discover that you are seeing that circumstance in a way and that you could see it in another way. So one of the ways in which you can adjust the lens that you look at things with is to consult someone you know and trust for an unbiased view. Another way to look at things, and this one you can do on your own, is to look at the situation or circumstance with a lens of the Word of God, using the Word to look at the situation. An example we see of a situation where the Lord gave the Israelites a word and instead of them to look at it according to how God asked them to look at it, they looked at it on their own, was the children of Israel when Moses sent the 12 spies to spy out Canaan before they went in. We'll see it in Numbers 13, 33. I read, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight now 10 of the 12 spies gave this perception of what they saw after they toured the promised land we can read this in numbers chapter 13 later but two joshua and caleb gave another perception their perception was according to the word that god gave moses which was they should go in because god will give them victory and with this perception both of them succeeded even 40 years later to be in the promised land where the while the other people because of their perception which became their reality never made it to the promised land another lens or filter with which we can look at circumstances to change it is the positivity filter that's what i call it the positivity filter we'll see that in romans chapter 8 verse 28 it says and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them that are called according to his purpose do you love god are you called according to his purpose so long as you love god and you are called according to his purpose then whatever it is that is happening to you, use the lens or filter of this word to look at it, a positive aspect of it. No matter how a circumstance is, there is a positive element to it. Some situations might be difficult, but the positive aspect of it is, I know there's a lesson I have to learn from this. I will learn it and I will move forward in Jesus' name. And so let's look through a positivity filter, a positivity lens at whatever situation or circumstance that happens to us. And the last one is the gratitude filter. Um, John 11, 41. The word of God says, in everything give thanks to God. Now, as we read this, this was a very difficult situation that happened and one of the places where it was recorded that Jesus wept when his close friend died. And look at what Jesus did when he got there. John 11:41. 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Now what Jesus did here is thanksgiving, gratitude. He gave gratitude not because his friend died. But he's giving gratitude because he knows that God will hear him. And so let's find cause, no matter what situation and circumstance we face, to give thanks unto God for it. Find an angle that you can give God thanks. As we do this, the circumstances will change. 
And so I encourage each and every one of us to begin to apply these four different types of lenses depending on what circumstances we face so that we'll be able to see it in another light and we'll be able to use that angle to overcome in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you were blessed by this message, please like it and share with others. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages at Doxa Missions. That is D-O-X-A-M-I-S-S-I-O-N-S on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook at Doxa Missions and on Twitter at Doxa Missions. We are also on Instagram at Doxa Missions SLU. God bless you.